Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the show, all terms and definitions will be in the description. We're essentially going to look at every single pick the Bengals took based on production and athleticism data to see what their chances are in terms of long-term success. All that stuff out of the way, let's get to the first pick of the draft, which of course is Jonah Williams, offensive tackle out of Alabama. Uh, when you look at his athleticism data, he hit a 33.88 explosive lower body strength score, a 71.24 speed score, and a 36.85 flexibility score. Uh, based on his overall athleticism data, he doesn't hit the all pro all of the all pro thresholds he needs to hit, nor does he hit the Pro Bowl thresholds he needs to hit, but he does hit at least above the starter thresholds. And when you look at the averages, this puts more sort of concerns is that he's nowhere near the all pro averages, pro bowl averages, or starter averages, except for speed. He does have at least above average speed for his size when you look at the averages of the offensive tackle position. Um, and I know that a lot of people talk about Jonah Williams as an inside sort of uh, offensive lineman, like he's a guard, or he's a center, or he's this, or he's that. I mean, I do think he's going to end up being at least a starter for the Bengals, but again, there's very low chance he becomes a special outcome type, um, if, if at all. So that's the only major concern with Jonah Williams is that he's just not, he does not have elite athleticism for the position, and the vast majority of great offensive tackles had great athleticism. Um, there's definitely going to be some outliers here and there, uh, but uh, most of them, if not all of them, had great athleticism traits. And of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which of course is Drew Sample, tight end out of Washington. When you look at his uh, production data, he had a 31.55 market share production score. Doesn't hit above the all-pro threshold, but does hit above the Pro Bowl threshold. But when you look at the averages at the position, nowhere near the all-pro average, Pro Bowl average, or starter average. And when you look at athleticism data, 57.24 explosive lower body strength score, 70.76 speed score, and 71.71 flexibility score. Doesn't have all-pro athleticism when it comes to just speed you know he pretty much hits the explosion score he needs to hit in the flexibility score but doesn't quite have all pro speed but does hit at least pretty close to the starter averages in terms of athleticism in many ways drew sample has the athletic profile of a starting tight end but he doesn't have the production of a starting tight end so he definitely can become a starter but i would say it's less likely due to his production. at the very least he's going to be a starter but he's just not going to be a starter that you draft for fantasy football, I guess is the best way to put it. Then, of course, we get to uh, Jermaine Pratt, linebacker out of NC State. When you look at his production, he had an 80.29 solo tackle market share score. Uh, doesn't hit the all pro threshold, does hit above the Pro Bowl threshold, uh, and of course, the starter threshold. When you look at the average, is nowhere near the all pro average or Pro Bowl average, but definitely above the starter average. And I think that's how you should view Jermaine Pratt. He had a very good speed score. His explosion score wasn't that great, and he didn't do flexibility testing. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is, when it comes to Pratt, is he's someone that I think has a chance to become a starting linebacker for the Bengals, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's good value to get a guy like that in the sort of uh, day two uh, area. Then, of course, we get to Ryan Finley, quarterback out of NC State. When you look at his data, he had a 71.55 career FBS score. Uh, which, when you look at the all pro career threshold or all, all pro career average, excuse me, he doesn't quite hit there, but he does hit close to the Pro Bowl career score and the starter career score, uh, specifically the starter career score. When you look at the thresholds of the position, he doesn't hit the all pro career threshold, but does hit at least above the Pro Bowl career threshold. And when you look at his, uh, at his overall, like, best single season high school production score and FBS score, he pretty much hits above the starting quarterback threshold. And the Pro Bowl quarterback threshold, uh, with the exception of his high school production data, which doesn't quite hit the Pro Bowl, uh, Pro Bowl quarterback threshold. But biggest question marks, on, honestly, Ryan Finley is his age. You know, he's twenty. He's over. He's about twenty-four, a little bit over twenty-four years old, and um, there hasn't been that many starting quarterbacks who entered the NFL draft at twenty-four years old. So basically, on draft day, they were twenty-four. Uh, David Garrard is one of those guys, and uh, Jeff Garcia is one of those guys. But other than Jeff Garcia and David Garrard, there just have not been that many incredibly successful players who were 24 on draft day. And Ryan Finley is that. Um, so that's the only sort of major concern for him. But he does have potential to be a starter. 
But if he does become a starter, he's going to be more in the David Garrard, Jeff Garcia mold, I guess is the best way to put it. Then, of course, we get to Rennell Wren, defensive tackle at Arizona State. When you look at his, uh, his production, it's a 4-3 defensive tackle. 60.27 in terms of solo tackle data, 14.77 in terms of sack data, and 22.07 in terms of tackle for loss data. Pretty much hits all the starter areas of production, but doesn't hit the all-pro or pro bowl area. But does have great athleticism traits, 96.36 in terms of his explosion score, 83.54 in terms of speed, and 81.22 in terms of flexibility. For the most part, he's someone that I think has the potential to be a starter, but I think anything more than that would be very lucky on his part. Um, and wasn't that productive of a player at Arizona State. Everybody says to evaluate him as a nose tackle, but he was at least drafted for the Bengals to be more of a 4-3 D tackle. So uh, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how he turns out. I do think he can become a starter. He does have great athleticism traits, but I think it will definitely take some time before he actually has like a breakout season, uh, if you will. And even after his breakout season, I think he'll be wildly inconsistent for most of his career. Uh, then, of course, we get to Mike Jordan, offensive guard out of uh, Ohio State. 95.52 in terms of explosion, 47.61 in terms of speed, and 60.64 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, doesn't hit the all-pro or pro bowl thresholds for the guard position, but does hit at least above the starter threshold at the position. And definitely does have great flexibility testing. When you look at the averages at the position, the main areas where he is not hitting the averages is in Pro Bowl, All Pro, and Starter in terms of speed and flexibility testing. So Mike Jordan is definitely a slower guard prospect, but he does have great explosion traits, and I think that is enough to make him a good player. I think when it comes to the offensive guard position, you need to have at least one elite athleticism trait to be a really special player. And I think in Mike Jordan's case, I think there's enough here that he could end up becoming maybe not an outlier per se, but definitely someone who performs a lot better than a lot of people expected just because of how great his explosion traits are. So that, that's kind of how I view Mike Jordan as someone who's going to excel in the sort of short area quickness sort of department or explosive department, but not someone who's going to excel in a system where you need him to like pull and get head on a hat because he's just not as fast compared to other guard prospects. Then, of course, we get to Travion Williams, uh, running back out of Texas A&M. Um, when you look at his production date, 81.86. In terms of market share production, doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, but does hit above the five-time Pro Bowl threshold and three-time Pro Bowl threshold. When you look at the averages, he's nowhere near the all-pro average, but he definitely is above the Pro Bowl average and the starter average. And when you look at athleticism data, 40.70 in terms of explosion, 59.42 in terms of speed, and 13 in terms of flexibility for his size. Did not hit uh, a 79 or higher athleticism trait. The vast majority of multiple All-Pro slash Pro Bowl running backs since 1999 had at least one 79 or higher athleticism trait. Trayvon Williams did not have one of those. But he does have potential to possibly be a starter uh, because of his speed traits and his production traits. But it would definitely be very interesting to see how he turns out just because he doesn't have the greatest profile ever. He's more likely going to be just a backup. But we'll see what happens with him. Uh, then, of course, we get to Deshaun Davis out of Auburn. 70.74 in terms of solo tackle data. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold uh, or starter threshold at the position. Well, it does hit above the starter threshold, but when you look at the averages, he's not near the all-pro average, pro bowl average, and definitely is close to the starter average, but not quite there. Um, athleticism testing-wise, I don't have a ton of athleticism testing on him. Uh, I'm probably going to update things as I go along, but, you know, he looks more like a backup player. You know, that's essentially what you got in sort of a day three area. Not a whole lot to talk about with him in the later rounds. Then, of course, we get to Rodney Anderson, running back out of Oklahoma. Marcus Air production score 33.12 out of 100. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, five-time Pro Bowl threshold, or three-time Pro Bowl threreshold. And when you look at the averages at the position... Nowhere, they, nowhere near the all-pro average, pro bowl average, or starter average. I know there's a lot of people that are very excited about Rodney Anderson. They think that he's someone that if he had been healthy, would have been very productive. Which is true. Maybe he would have been really productive. Maybe he would have been. Maybe he would have tested really athletic if he actually was healthy. But, you know, this is a guy that has missed a lot of time due to injury. It's a guy that hasn't really been a bell cow back 
uh, in any sense, a stretch of the imagination, which is what great players typically are. Great running backs typically were bell cow backs when they were in college, or at least they had the majority of the touches in college. And Ronnie Anderson was just never that type of guy. So we'll see what happens, but I do think that he's more likely going to be a backup or at least someone who does, you know, uh, uh, touches here and there, you know, kind of a rotational back, if you will. Then, of course, we get to the last pick, Jordan Brown. Uh, when you look at uh, Jordan Brown's production data, he had a 13.83 uh, solo tackle score, 88.94 pass deflection score. His solo tackle score doesn't really hit the all-pro Pro Bowl average, but he does have a great pass deflection score, which does hit at least above the Pro Bowl and all-pro area when it comes to his pass deflection data. But it's also important to remember that all of this production is against lower-level competition, which definitely puts into doubt a couple of things. I mean, the basic thing you can conclude from the data is that when he was playing at South Dakota State, he was more of a making plays on the ball versus making tackles on his side of the football field based on the overall data. So again, we'll see what happens to him. He does have some good athleticism traits. He had above average explosion traits and above average speed traits. We didn't really do any flexibility testing to determine much else. Overall, when you look at the Cincinnati Bengals draft class, it's okay. I think they've had better classes. I think last year's class is gonna be, is, is a lot better than this class. I think there's definitely some starters here. I think Michael Jordan is someone I think can come in right away and become a starter. Uh, I think Ryan Finley has the potential to be sort of a spot starter. Drew Sample has the potential to be a starter, but I don't see any elite players in this draft class. You know, I don't see anybody that you can hang your hat on and go, oh yeah, he's going to be one of the best at his position. You know, if that makes any sense for the Bengals draft. So I think they got a lot of uh, depth. And, and talent from that perspective, a lot of depth talent, but there's just not a lot of special players on this team um, based on overall data. So that's the only sort of concern I have with this draft class. But overall, it, it's an okay class, but there's no one player I can point to and go, wow, he's going to be special. And that's the only issue with this draft class. And of course, my name is James Cobra. You can find me on the work at draftcobra.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.